Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Squad Room. I'm your host, Garrett Tesla. The Squad Room is about developing, optimizing, and maximizing the health and wellness of law enforcement officers all around the world. The show is my journey as a law enforcement officer to get better, smarter, and stronger by evaluating my own life and by reaching out to experts to see what I can learn from them. I talk to other cops, doctors, Navy SEALs, meditation experts, anyone who can be a force multiplier in my life. Thanks for being with us and get ready for another great show. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. Before we jump too far in, I want to thank our sponsor for the show, SB Tactical and the iCombat Active Shooter Training System. Now in the past when you've heard me talk about the iCombat system, it's been a product for departments to either rent or buy for the entire department. And there hasn't been a product that could help an individual officer improve their skills. Well that changes today. I finally get to talk about the iCombat Pro, the first realistic firearms training system that you can use safely in your own living room. The iCombat Pro is designed specifically for individual officers, and it's perfect for officers who, like me, don't have easy access to a range, or who also, like me, have a really hard time explaining to the, all the online ammo purchases to the spouse unit. The iCombat Pro sets up easily, and your target is a sensor box that you can place anywhere. The pistol is the same iCombat pistol with the ability to cycle, emit muzzle flashes and sounds, and the sensor gives you immediate feedback on shot placement. But here's what I really like, and it's an example of how you can use this system uh, at home. I carry a Glock 17 on duty, and so the iCombat pistol is nearly identical in feel and weight. I can set the sensor up in one of my rooms, and I can practice pieing corners and addressing a threat from cover down my own hallways. While the kids are gone, of course. Pre-sale orders are being taken, and you can learn more about iCombat training system at sbtactical.com. They're great supporters of the show. It's an American-made product, and they're veteran-owned. All right, now today's guest. Today's guest is Nick Shaw. Nick is the founder and CEO of Renaissance Periodization, uh, perhaps better known as RP Strength. I've talked about them on the show before with our past guest, Freddie Camacho, uh, when he mentioned them for the first time. And we've given away one of their auto templates before, and we'll talk about that more in a bit. RP Strength got their start working with power lifters and Olympic lifters, but they've also moved into top-level CrossFit athletes like Freddie and his wife, China Cho, and many others. The RP method is somewhat unique, uh, especially with CrossFitters and our uh, seemingly unending desire to stay paleo. Uh, but really, they're a coaching service for both nutrition and conditioning. They also have a variety of programs from personal one-on-one -on -one coaching to diet templates to books and online seminars. And RP Strength has a variety of programs from uh, for average people to completely elite athletes to, in our case, tactical athletes. Uh, what I really liked and why I wanted to get Nick on the show was that they have a ton of content that they put out, both free and through their mailing list and through their uh, programs. After Freddie was on the show, Nick heard that I was trying to lose weight, and he offered to send me a three-month template for their program, which we'll talk about a little bit more uh, in the show. I liked it. However, I'll be honest about two things. One, I only completed about a month of the program, but in fairness, it was because I was already planning to do a whole life challenge, and I had to start that with my wife, so we shifted to that. And two, I didn't follow it as closely as I could have. Uh, but still, I saw some gains, and I saw a lot of benefits. Nick's programs really emphasize the timing and the quantity of nutrients uh, in the time and the, in the time immediately before and after a workout. It's something that I never really emphasized much, uh, especially stuff like eating carbs before a workout. And I know a lot of people talk about stuff like window of gains after, uh, after a workout, and I started to focus on that and trying to uh, ingest protein soon after a, a workout, but uh, I, I kind of have always left with or, or have remnants of the Body for Life program, which was that you didn't, you tried not to eat before working out in the morning. You tried to work out in a fasted state. So I was always reluctant to eat carbs early in the morning, right before I knew I was going to work out. And I thought I'd be heavy or lethargic or uh, have stomach issues. And that actually turned out not to be the case when I was doing this. And in fact, I found as Nick promised would happen that my recovery was much better. My muscle soreness decreased significantly. Uh, and I, uh, had, uh, I, I was able to go a lot better in the workouts. Uh, now that the whole life challenge is over, I plan to revisit the RP template again with a little bit more focus. Now for the whole life challenge, we'll do, I'll do a whole other, uh, episode on that, uh, some other time and give you my recap of that. Uh, overall, very successful. Uh, also as part of this episode, Nick offered to give away one of the auto templates to a listener of the show. The winner will be able to select either a weight loss plan or a mass gain plan. Uh, so details on that, how, on how to enter that contest are after the interview. 
So just stay tuned to the uh, post show, a little lingo there for you, the post show. And I'll tell you how to enter that contest for a free uh, $99 value uh, for either losing weight or wanting to gain muscle. And Nick has assured me that uh, it's it's possible to lose weight without losing strength. That was one of my biggest concerns because I just came out of 2015 with a lot of strength gains, a lot of PRs, uh, huge bumps, uh, double digit, sometimes 40% increases in my PRs, and I didn't want to lose any of that. And, and, and in the time that I was doing it, I felt like I was actually still getting better. All right, so to follow us at the squad room or – to follow the squad room, it's at the squad room on Twitter or Instagram and to reach out to us uh, with any questions, comments about this show or anything like that, just squad podcast at gmail.com. And like I said, after the show is, or after the interview, there's information on how to uh, enter a contest to win one of Nick's templates and check out a picture of Nick uh, on our show notes and all the information we talk about in the show at the squad and you'll see Nick and you'll see that he knows what he's talking about. The other thing I liked about RP Strength and why I think they're a little more legit than just your average, or a lot more legit, really, than your average uh, trainer, so to speak, or nutritionist, is that they've got a lot of PhDs on staff. They've got college-level coaches on staff. They've got um, uh, nutritionists and sports physiologists and people like that are the actual coaches. So they definitely know what they're talking about. Nick is definitely one of those guys. So look forward to the interview. Nick Shaw with RP Strength. Nick Shaw, welcome to the squad room. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, we I got introduced to you, as I've said before, uh, through Freddie Camacho, a good dude who's a prior uh, guest on this show. You know Freddie. Um, yeah, sure. I've, I've got the pleasure to meet him. He's a real good dude. So yeah. China. Uh, yeah, and, and actually both he and China are uh, are sponsored by your, by your company, uh, RP Strength, or Renaissance Periodization Strength, right? Yep, and uh, they were introduced to us uh, through their CrossFit coach, uh, HyperFit, Doug Chapman. So he kind of introduced us to his whole group of athletes. Uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of the listeners know, but he works with a ton of the top people out there, you know, China, Freddie, um, you know, a whole host of others, and he helps coach the the Miami team in the Grid League as well. How did you get hooked up with, uh, with HyperFit? That's a pretty big name in the and like there's there's a few guys who do those top level coaching like Dusty Highland or mm-hmm. uh, Ben uh, is it Bergeron and then Hyperfit. Sure. Uh, how'd you meet up with him or how, how do you guys go back? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know this. Uh, I've actually never met him in person. Ironically, um, he's uh, he's been at some Juggernaut stuff. Uh, we're good friends with the Juggernaut crew, Chad Smith and all that, and uh, he kind of knows of us through there. And he's from uh, Ann Arbor, which is where me and my colleague both went to school so i just kind of think he knows kind of of us and has seen a bunch of our work online and yeah i've chatted with him a few a few times on the phone and all that so it's kind of more of those uh, you know mutual friend type things and just kind of both appreciated you know he appreciated our work we appreciate the work he does for a lot of top athletes so it just kind of made sense cool so uh i guess i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself explain to people what rp strength does and and kind of the makeup of the company a little bit yeah, sure. So we primarily write di- online diet and training programs for folks. Um, we've got uh, you know quite the reputation going in the CrossFit circles, but uh, really we work with all sorts of strength athletes. So CrossFit, you know, weightlifting, powerlifting, strongman, and uh, you know, so a lot of people go, oh, we well, guys just work with athletes, right? Well, yeah, it's not necessarily true. We actually you know work with a lot of just. Um, you know, general population who is just looking to get leaner or healthier, just lose weight. So that's a big makeup of our, uh, you know, total clients as well. And uh, you have a interesting staff. Um, like you're not all like just registered dietitians or like certified strength and conditioning coaches. You've got some education, uh, some some legitimate bona fides in your on your roster of employees. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think that's kind of what makes you unique. Yeah, yeah. So they're actually consultants. Um, so we've got about uh, 10 or so. And really, this kind of goes back. I come from a bodybuilding background. And I don't know if you're super familiar with bodybuilding, but there's kind of this whole divide between, um, I'm going to use some stereotypes here, you know, kind of like uh, the meathead types who, you know, are just really big, you know, muscular, you know, they kind of have their evidence you know, kind of does the talking for them with the way they look and all that. Um, and then on the other side, kind of have, 
you know, more or less kind of like the geeks, you know, the nerds who just, you know, will, will read all the evidence, all the studies, and they're trying to figure out how to do it themselves, you know, because they want to get better results. And so there's always been this divide between the two where it's like, you know, you have, quote unquote, the meatheads versus the, you know, the the, the, the nerds or whatever. So it's speak. like high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Totally. <laughs> and so, you know, our goal was like, well, you know, why not be both, right? So, you know, my, my colleague who helped start RP Strength with me, you know, he has a PhD in sport physiology. He also has, uh, you know, his master's in uh, strength and conditioning. Um, and his undergrad was exercise science. My undergrad was uh, a kinesiology, so sport management. So it kind of made sense for me to kind of run, more or less run the company in terms of like the business and all that. Um, and he kind of helps create all the programs and all the science and all that. But yeah, so we have you know a couple registered dietitians on staff. Probably have six or seven PhDs in you know like strength and conditioning, you know sport science, sport physiology. Um, well, one of my colleagues has a PhD in uh, human nutrition, and she's a registered dietitian. Uh, and you know she's a world champion jujitsu grappler. So we kind of we kind of set out to be like, all right, well, we want kind of the best of both worlds. You know, we want people who are really, really qualified in terms of academics. So, you know, a lot of our staff, they're professors or full-time researchers. And then in addition, you know, they consult with us and they work with clients as well. So we really wanted to kind of combine, you know, high level athletes and high level academics, because that seemed to be, you know, something that was missing out there. Yeah, it definitely seems uh, like as someone who's, you know, started this process trying to learn more about, like the the specifics of nutrition, and I started with like reading Rob Wolf's book, which is probably a you know a popular one where people start with the paleo uh, the paleo solution. Sure, sure. And there's a lot of science in that book, but that's the first time I ever kind of dove into the why behind some of this. And then you start to kind of take some ownership, I think, if you understand the the motivation or the reason behind those things. Some sometimes. So, um, what are some of the basic? Uh, tenets of your program or the basic core ideas of the RP strength uh, template for lack of a better term sure so everything's kind of based around uh, you know priorities right so in, in almost anything you're going to do there's priorities you know certain things that uh, take priority or you know matter more than others and so the way we look at it is we have a pretty cool chart as you know about six different priorities so you know the main one hopefully this goes without saying and you know, it, the same would apply for training as well is no matter what you're doing, you know, no matter what diet you're running, the number one variable has to be consistency. Yeah. Right. You no, know, like if, if you're not showing up to the gym, you're not hitting your workouts. Well, you know, you're probably not going to progress all that well. You know, the same same holds true with dieting. If you know, no matter what the diet is, right, it could be the best diet in the world. But if you're not being consistent and you're only following it, you know, half of the time, well, you're only going to get half the results or you know, even more so with diet, you know, you can be really good five days out of the week. And then if you basically just completely fall off the wagon on the weekends, well, let's say you lose a pound or two during the week. I mean, you easily gain that back during the weekend. What happens is you end up kind of getting the worst of, of, of both worlds because you're trying to stay strict during the week and you're literally canceling yourself out on the weekend. And what happens is the net result is more or less even. You don't really go anywhere. So, you know, if you really want to kind of get the best results, you know, you know, consistency is king. So above all else, that's kind of the main priority is just consistency, which hopefully is more or less, you know, common sense. And so building off of consistency, you know, we always like to think about it, you know, what's a, what's a way that you can make a diet sustainable, you know, make it long term, you know, something that's lasting. So no quick fixes, no gimmicks, no fads. Again, that's why we, you know, have PhDs on staff. We're not after these, you know, 10 day detox or, you know, three week little challenge things, you know, we're after what's going to be sustainable, what can actually change people's lives because, you know, anyone can do paleo for a couple of weeks and lose five, 10 pounds in water weight. What happens when they stop that? Well, it comes right back and, you know, chances are, you know, they're right back where they started and probably discouraged and, you know, that's how, you know, dieting can get a bad name. We have all these little, because again, you know, it's a, uh, People want results, and people want results fast. So what's the quickest way to get results? Just drop out all of your carbs, and you lose a bunch of water weight. And it's just not a good strategy for long term and for increasing and enhancing performance. So, you know, kind of everything that we do around, you know, the RP templates and everything is you, you, you're going to have these priorities, and they're going to lead to a, a, 
a, a sort of bigger picture in the way that you lay out your diet, you know, based around when you train and all that, and kind of touch on those just a little bit more. But it's kind of like those main principles aren't going to change no matter what your goal is. So if your goal is just to maintain your weight, you know, that's totally fine. If you want to lose weight, well, here's what you do. If you want to gain weight, here's what you do. You know, the, the layout and everything's not necessarily going to change, but the amounts are. You know, and the goals are going to change. So if you want to lose weight, it's like, okay, well, here's what you do. You have to, you know, reduce calories. And if you want to gain weight, well, you have to do the opposite and eat more. And that actually leads into, you know, once you get past consistency. So consistency is the overriding um, biggest priority. After that, you have calories in, calories out. We like to use the analogy uh, in the RP Diet Book that, uh, you know, calorie balance is, you know, if you're thinking about a car, that's, that's the engine of your car. You know, it's the most important part. So it's going to account for about 50% of your diet success. So literally, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and you're not in a caloric deficit, meaning you're uh, eating less than you're burning, you're probably not going to lose much weight. You know, certainly there are some exceptions with like water weight and all that, but more or less that's kind of the, the most important part to think about. And the opposite would hold true if you're trying to gain weight. You know, if let's say you're 180 pounds, you're trying to get up to 190 and the, the scale's never moving, you know, you're just you're not going to gain a whole lot of muscle, you know, by doing that sitting at the same weight. Again, there's a few exceptions to that rule, but by and large, you know, that's uh, kind of the overriding factor, you know, calorie balance. So if you eat less, you're going to lose weight. It's the best way to lose fat. And the opposite holds true for the best way to put yourself in a caloric surplus, meaning you're eating more than you're burning. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's like a pretty, uh, that one's kind of traditional in, in the sense of, of, it makes sense. I mean, there's, the math kind of checks out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So it, uh, you know, kind of seems, you know, and once you kind of lay it out like this, people go, oh, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, there's some folks out there who, who don't really buy into that, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense because they seem to think that, you know, like eating carbs will magically make you fat or something like that, which just doesn't hold true because, um, you know, if you're truly eating less calories than you're burning, it, it almost... And again, we'll get into that now with the the next couple priorities. But uh, if you're eating less and you're burning, it's almost next to impossible, you know, not not to lose weight. So, you know, that's kind of one of those things. And, and somehow carbs have been vilified, you know, recently. And you know, people are almost scared to eat them, and it just kind of seems crazy because, especially in CrossFit, I don't even know how those two kind of came together, right? People are scared of carbs, but in CrossFit, it's notorious for really hard workouts. Well, the two go together naturally. Like, if you want to perform better, you're going to want to eat more carbs. Obviously, if you control for calories, that is. So you can't just eat an unlimited amount of carbs. Um, so, yeah, that kind of leads into number two. So once you get past calorie balance, right? So theoretically, you could go, oh, okay, well, if I need 2,000 calories to maintain my weight, if I eat 1,500 calories just of Twinkies, I can lose weight. Right? <laughs> uh, and, and the funny thing is that's actually been done by a, a, a nutrition professor uh, he ate mostly Twinkies. It's called the Twinkie Diet if you want to Google it. <laughs> and he just kind of showed the, the importance of calorie balance. He ate some other stuff besides Twinkies, but by and large, that was so. Yeah, yeah, that was the bulk of his calories. So, um, again, you know, we would never you know, promote that, but it just kind of shows the importance of uh, calorie balance. And then uh, another another news story just hit recently, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago, of a high school science teacher who did the same. Um, do you remember the movie uh, Super Size Me, the documentary? Oh, yeah, no? sure. Mm hmm. Well, this guy basically did the exact opposite, and he only ate McDonald's, and he showed that he could lose a bunch of weight, and he did because he was eating less calories than he was burning. And so, again, you know, not not again, we would never suggest that for anybody, but it just kind of shows the importance of calorie balance. Right. So once you get past that, you know, you look at you know, you're going to have to have protein, right? Because protein is really important for strength athletes. You know, you're going to need carbs and you're going to need fats. Um, just kind of quick tips, general, you know, guidelines for that is protein. If you want to start at about one gram per pound of body weight, that's probably a pretty good start for, for most people. Again, you know, we can talk about exceptions all day long, but uh, that's probably a pretty good starting point. Um, so protein is going to be most important for strength athletes. After that, um, carbohydrates, because again, you know, carbs more or less fuel your performance. Um, carbs are going to, you know, vary quite a bit based on physical activity. So if you're on a rest day, you're not eating as many carbs as if you're, you know, training twice a day, you know, like someone like Freddie in China who, you know, are, you know, very high level athletes. So some, some general rules, if you're just doing like a, you know, a Metcon, you know, CrossFit class, 
you know, if you're about one gram per pound of body weight for carbs, that's probably a pretty good starting point. You know, if you're in the gym for a couple hours, you know, maybe closer to like 1.5 or 2 grams per pound of body weight. It's a good rule of thumb. So after protein and carbs, uh, the last one is fats. And so if you kind of know how many calories you need to eat and you already know, you know, how much protein you need and how much carbs you need, uh, it should be a pretty easy, you know, uh, math equation to do. So take your total calories minus the amount of protein minus the amount of carbs and you're left with your fats. So fats are a little bit less important uh, for performance and, and enhancing body composition, things like that. Okay. So going back to, to carbs and just maybe just calories in general, do you make any sort of uh, a distinction between, say, good carbs versus bad carbs? Is there such a thing for you, uh, or is it just a matter of quantity? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, so uh, food quality would actually be... The nutritional priority number four. Oh, well, there we go. And under the five. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> nice transition. So, um, I'm sorry. Well, I guess maybe number five if we're talking about uh, consistency being number one. So, yeah. So I'll talk on talk about that in just a second. So right after uh, macronutrient, in, uh, that's about thirty percent of your diet success. So between calorie balance and macronutrients, you're looking at about eighty percent of your diet success. After that's nutrient timing. Um, so a little bit more of a, a detail in the grand scheme of things, about 10% of your diet success. Uh, that just means like how many meals you're eating a day. And then um, a, a good general rule of thumb there is you probably want to eat most of your carbs around when you're training. And fats tend to stay lower around training just because fats kind of slow slow down digestion and uh, absorption of things. And you, you know, the idea is you kind of want things to get into your, to your system faster after training. So that's just kind of a quick summary of nutrient timing. And then after that, like you said, it goes into food quality. So that would be like the glycemic index of carbs. So something like, uh, you know, Gatorade or sugar, something that's more sweet tasting is going to be higher on the GI scale. Um, generally speaking, you probably want to have those closer around training. So, you know, for someone like, you know, China and Freddie, you know, we're going to recommend something like Gatorade powder or uh, a supplement that has high GI carbs. So something like dextrose. And then you mix that with uh, whey protein. And what it does is just kind of helps set the stage, uh, gives you a little bit more energy while training, and then it's going to help set the stage for better recovery. So this is more important for folks that are training more often or training really hard. You know, if you're just doing some CrossFit classes during the week of just an hour or so, it's not uh, a super important detail. But uh, when you start getting more competitive, you know, you start getting on the, you know, the regionals level, you want to make it to the CrossFit games, things like that, you know, those minor details are going to start to add up, you know, it can be the difference between, you know, stepping on the podium or not, you know, mm -hmm. it can be the difference between, you know, fifth place at the regionals or super regionals and, and making it to the games and, you know, getting sixth or seventh and, and sitting home for the year. Yeah. So for this audience who is largely uh, groggy from night shifts and not sure. <laughs> not looking for podiums but very active uh, uh, CrossFitters, you know, my challenge um, is always uh, love to work out, love to get to the to the gym and, and do stuff. It's a matter of being able to get there. So for people who are you know kind of on that three to four to maybe five days a week if they're lucky mm -hmm. um, trips to the to the CrossFit gym or to their regular gym. What are the what are the nutritional priorities and the in the timing maybe because like you sent you sent me a template uh, for me a couple months ago and I tried out and I, I learned a lot from it. One of those things was was that kind of carb timing and lack of fat timing around workouts mm -hmm. and how I felt uh, I was definitely stronger or I felt better during the workouts and I recovered with a lot less soreness. I don't know if that if there's a correlation there if that's yeah, just something sure. there but. That was something that I learned a lot um, trying one of the templates for a while, but uh, yeah, I'm not making it to the games, right? And 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 drinking the <laughs> drinking Gatorade uh, is is again because of CrossFit, right? In the boxes and the, that association with sugars and carbs is it was ingrained in me as like ugh bad, but I did notice that I recovered faster when I tr would try something like that, uh, you know, like a like a Kool Aid drink or a Gatorade drink. Um, right after a workout or at the towards the end of a workout but uh, what are yeah so what, I mean what are your tips for the guy that's just you know trying to get by trying to, to do uh, to do some of just trying to either maintain or try and start a regimen and is working on his macronutrients and timing and, and going into the gym does that make sense yeah totally so again you know the the kind of I don't you know the the newer you are to, to dieting sort of 
you know, you kind of focus on the bigger pictures, right? So it's calorie balance. So if you really want to lose, you know, 10 pounds and get leaner and you've kind of been stuck at the same weight for a while, but you're, you know, you're making it to the gym three, four, five times a week and you just can't lose those last few pounds, you know, you know, start focusing on calorie balance and then you start to kind of look at uh, how your mac, you know, your macronutrient breakdown goes each day and you kind of start to to look at those and make little tweaks and that's kind of where you get started. You know, you certainly don't have to to come in, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what's, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, can I eat white rice or brown rice or, you know, something like that, which is just this minor, minor detail that's almost more or less going to make no impact. So you just want to start with the bigger principles and, and really kind of focus your time there because, again, if you're a really busy person only making it to the gym, you know, several times a week, you know, trying to focus on these little minor, minor details probably isn't a good, you know, use of someone's time and resources. So, again, you know, start with the basics, kind of work from there. As you get a little bit more and more advanced, you can kind of start to worry, you know, about, uh, you know, food quality or supplements or, you know, the exact timing. But I do do think some just kind of quick general rules of thumb for folks are, you know, eat most of your carbs around training. That's probably a pretty good start for most people. Um, just kind of watch your, your body weight on the scale, you know, one or two times a week. And if you're trying to lose weight and it's not, you know, going down, we'll know that you have to start eating a little bit less somehow. And for a lot of people, you know, that can be as easy as, you know, giving up some soda. You know, soda is almost, you know, never a good idea to drink. So I think, you know, CrossFit definitely has it right there, you know, and they're kind of, you know, anti-soda thing. I mean, yeah. you, can't, you can't really make a good case for soda. Um, again, you know, the only time we kind of recommend sugar is, uh, you know, around hard training. And again, it's like you said, if you've never done it before, which for a lot of folks doing CrossFit and coming from a paleo background, this will be true. You really start to notice more energy in the gym if you have, you know, some some higher GI carbs around training. And again, it can be as simple as something as like, you know, fruit juice or you know, coconut water. Even a lot of people do that if they like to go more paleo. It's just you know, having more carbs around training, you're going to notice that you have more energy while training. Um, so you can actually lose weight, you know, and your strength doesn't have to suffer because there's this prevailing myth out there that if you're dieting, your strength's just going to tank it. Mm -hmm. And yes, that is true if you're, you know, doing paleo and probably low carb. So, you know, paleo is a really good start for most people. I'll never knock paleo. I think it's a really good start. And like you said, you know, that's where you started, you know, reading Rob Wolf. It's just, uh, it's, you know, it's a pretty basic step for a lot of people and it's just pretty easy to do, right? You just kind of, you know, focus on not eating, you know, quote unquote bad food mm -hmm. so I think that's a really good start and as you probably saw with the templates I mean we recommend a lot of lean proteins veggies um, you know things like sweet potatoes fruit so you know there's there's a very good you know kind of paleo foundation because folks always kind of see those workout carbs and they go oh well you know can I do paleo and RP the answer is of course you can it's very easy and especially on like rest days or something I mean that's you're talking lean proteins healthy fats some low glycemic carbs and you know vegetables. Yeah, I thought they I thought they co coexisted very well. Your your template programs and, and the paleo idea. Um, totally. I've I have found that for me, uh, it's really hard to get enough carbs. I mean, I'm I'm about 250 pounds. I'm pretty active. I try to be active. So for me, it's hard to get a lot of good carbs, quote unquote, paleo good carbs, and <laughs> yeah. and feel good right at all day long. So I do, I've, I've added back brown rice and, and some of those other things. Um, sweet potatoes, of course, too, but you can only eat so many sweet potatoes in a day before you're ready to gag. Absolutely. Man. <laughs> that's a, and that's, you know, one of these things with paleo, well, if you're a bigger person and you're going to need, you know, more carbs, I mean, how much sweet potatoes can you eat? And it's like, you know, it just goes back to the, you know, people are terrified of eating grains. Well, if you're controlling for calories, there's no reason you can't eat, you know, whole grain bread or, you know, whole grain bagels, especially closer around training. Like, I just found that idea just, you know, you know ludicrous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Control for calories, that's the biggest thing. And then, you know, and again, it goes back to this idea of long-term sustainability. If you're telling people, if you're trying to limit an entire macronutrient group, so you're trying to basically tell people that they can't have carbs, more or less, you know, how is that sustainable, right? Like, can yeah. anyone, you know, not eat carbs for years at a time? I don't know too many folks that can do that. And, and again, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, I don't want to say everything in moderation because that uh, is a little bit too simple. But, you know, you start looking at the bigger nutritional priorities and you can easily see how you can fit in most foods. Yeah. 
Well, I, I like your point there that, um, and I catch my catch myself doing this too. Like you, know, you think of the bigger picture. If you're really trying to start out, like right now, I'm in the middle of uh, really trying to lose a lot of weight. But I, I get my I catch myself getting caught up in. Um, you know, I work night shifts, so sometimes I don't have meal prepped or it's late and I've gone through my food or whatever. And so I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find a good alternative out there in the, in the restaurant world, right? Or not, not fast food world, but sometimes focus too much on the fact that, well, this place doesn't have brown rice, only white rice. So I can't go there, but they have good, like gr- sure. you know, steamed or grilled vegetables and lean meats to, to maybe offset that. And I focus on the fact that it's white rice, not brown rice. Um, and I, I think that's a lesson I can take from this is, you know, just kind of kind of think bigger picture of those of, of the overall goal uh, in, in that. Um, I've noticed, too, that because uh, I was playing with your templates, like you said, in that when I take a high GI um, carb at the end of a workout, I don't have a crash later in the day either. I don't know if that's something you can explain, but that was something that I noticed immediately was. You know, I'd, I'd have a like if I really went hard, did a good hard workout. About two hours later, I wanted a nap. And with the introduction of carbs at the end of the meal, I found that that wasn't the case, and I was able to kind of power through the day. That was kind of a nice benefit I didn't expect, and it's something I, I'm keeping uh, in all my workouts right now. Yeah, sure. No, I you know I think it makes sense, right? Because you're you're going really hard, and you know you're you're burning tons of energy. You know, if you're not putting some of that energy back in. Yeah, you know, you're going to be more tired. So that's definitely one of the advantages that the people say most of the time when they start, you know, kind of regardless of their background and, and dieting coming in. So they go, yeah, you know, I, I feel great throughout the day. I have more energy. And that's, you know, because they're, you know, eating enough carbs to kind of fuel and maintain their activity. All right. So I want to move on to um, proteins. We talked about carbs a little bit, but proteins. And one of the other things, again, that I took from your program was casein protein. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, I've tried or often use whey isolate and whey concentrate. And I mm-hmm. still don't understand the difference between those somewhat. I know that there's different levels of digestion, but I know that through you, I've learned that the casein protein is slower digesting proteins. And you recommend yep. people take that at bedtime. Uh, yeah. So, you know, back to the nutritional priorities. So after food quality, you know, food quality is maybe 5% of your diet success. Um, the very last one is supplements. So, you know, in, in all honesty, you know, if you just wanted to skip the casein in, in general, because like you said, it's a slow, slow digesting protein. So it's a, it's a good to take, you know, at periods where you're not going to be eating for a while. So casein kind of works. It just kind of sits in your stomach and it's slowly, you know, released into your system. So it's really good before bedtime, right? So that way you don't have to get up and eat in the middle of the night, which is probably pretty silly for most folks. And so it works well then, you know, or if you have you know, let's say business meetings for a few hours, you know, all day and you can't eat for four or five hours, you know, something like casein would probably be a good, a good idea to have then. Mm-hmm. So um, casein is more or less a dairy derivative. So if you can't do casein or didn't want to or didn't want to spend the money on it, you can just have something like, uh, you know, yogurt or cottage cheese at night. It's, uh, you know, going to be pretty similar because, again, supplements are, uh, you know, kind of a, a really small detail in the grand scheme of things, which, you know, as you might have noticed, you know, people – People like to spend a lot of time and resources on the very small details. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, you know, white rice versus brown rice, or you know, you know, way way isolate versus concentrate. Um, isolate, I'm pretty sure is lactose free. So if you have any issues with lactose, you probably want to use the isolate. Uh, whey concentrate usually ends up being the cheapest form. So if you do have lactose issues, you're probably going to have issues with that. Um, you know, again, kind of really small detail in mm-hmm. the grand scheme of things. So. So here, I want your opinion on what I've made. So, like, I'm on night shift right now, right? And my problem with sleeping, one of my problems with sleeping during the day, there's many, but one is um, if I go to bed hungry, I can't stay asleep. Like, it just, it just doesn't happen. So I've taken to modifying um, the casein protein, and I do about 50 grams of, of casein protein, a banana, and a good heaping teaspoon, tablespoon of either almond butter or peanut butter. And that's very filling, totally. and, I, and it helps me get through the night. But I, but is it you know another thing people talk about is carbs before bed, and I, it's only, I'm only really dealing with a banana there, in carbs, so it's not much. What twenty twenty five grams or so, mm-hmm. but the fat issue too. What is that? What's uh, my little milkshake there before bed? What uh, what's your opinion on that in terms of then going to sleep? Do you have one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's a it's a really great question, right? So another myth out there is 
you know, you can't eat, you know, at night. And again, it's a little bit different if you're working night shifts and the, the pendulum kind of swifts, you know, shifts a little bit because, you know, bedtime, awake times are going to be a little bit different. But the same overriding principles will apply. If you're training, you know, a few hours before you're going to sleep, the idea that you can't eat carbs before bed is, is you know, again, ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Because again, it goes back to calorie balance. So if you're controlling for calories, you know it's uh, it's not going to matter a whole lot if you're eating you know uh, quite a bit of them around training and a couple hours before bed because that's what you want. That's when you want most of your food is around training, especially carbs. So yeah, you know if you look at the templates, yeah, we're, we're going to suggest uh, casein at night, you know, because again, it should help people be pretty full, hopefully sleep better. And then it's also, you know, a slower digesting protein, which is really good, you know, for extended periods of time where you're not eating, which is before bed. And most of the time you're going to have fats with them. And you might have carbs as well. It just kind of depends on when you train. So again, yeah, more power to you, right? And again, it, again, it goes back to trade-offs, right? So if you're finding that you can't sleep very well, well, it's probably a pretty good idea to find something that's going to help you sleep better because we know sleep's really, really important for recovery and all that. Yeah. Scotch helps too, but that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out, you know, drinking a whole lot's probably not the best thing for <laughs> performance and body composition. But Yeah, no, we all agree on that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I tend to work out when I, when I work a night shift, I tend to work out after work at like, you know, 6 in the morning or yeah, 6 a.m. class, and then I'm home and do the kids for a little bit, and then off to off to, uh, off to to bed after that. So it seems like that's that's the best time for me to to get that stuff in. <laughs> that's about yeah, the only no, time that, for me to totally get that in. It totally makes sense, man. Um, you know, just another quick quick kind of tip uh, that seemed to come across with a lot of folks who do night shifts or, you know, third shift, things like that. Um, you know, because if you're just using the templates, you know, get this question a lot, you know, well, how do you modify that, right? Well, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're working shifts, there's almost always going to be a day where you're up longer, right, on the day yeah. that you have to overnight. So you're going to be up longer than normal. Well, chances are you're probably going to make up that time on another day, right? <laughs> you would hope. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, the, here's a, here's a, my general walkthrough of my week. So, if like, if I my first day back to work from the weekend – uh, you know, try. I get up at normal time. I try and get a full night of sleep beforehand. Get up, deal with the kids, and then try and get back to sleep around noon. And maybe I'm lucky. If I'm lucky, I'll get maybe four hours. And then, and then, so a four hour nap, and then you're up all night. So in that 24 hours, you get a, you get four hours, and then you sleep a regular night when you get home the next day or a regular day, regular night, regular day. What do you think? Six to seven hours if you're lucky. Um, and you keep that up through the week, and then after you, then other people do it different ways at the end of the week. Some guys, uh, co- you know, so you, they come home at six a.m. or whatever time they get off at night shift, and they just power through and stay up that whole day, and then crash early that night. And I can't do that. I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that in me. I come home, sleep a shorter amount of time, like maybe five hours, maybe four hours. Get up. I'm tired all day, but then I'm able to go back to sleep at a decent bedtime that night and i'm not quite so thrown off yeah sure so you know what i was going to say is a really kind of simple quick tip for that is so you know you have a day where you're going to be up longer you're probably pulling that night shift so you you basically just add in a meal on that day right so it's probably going to be further away from training so it's just going to be you know probably like a protein vegetable fat meal so i guess you could just think of it as a paleo meal um and then on a day where you're not up as long, right? So for you, whatever, you get home at 6, you sleep till let's say, noon, and then you're up from noon to, like, 10. So you're only up, whatever, 10 hours, and you're back asleep, you yeah. know, to get a normal, you know, kind of normal schedule. So, again, you know, just take a meal from that day, right, because you're up less time. So take a meal from that day, add it to the day that you're up longer. It's going to kind of cancel itself out, and there you go. Very, very simple, very easy fix. Makes sense. So uh, a lot of diets, a lot of the popular ones, even, like, the – like the slow carb, not so much paleo, but they all they all you know they emphasize this cheat day idea, um, and that and there's different. I've heard every theory from sure. it's it's uh, mental to oh no, it actually helps your body uh, avoid recalibration and it makes it think that you're still <laughs> too fat. What's your opinion on on the cheat meal thing yeah. or cheat day or what you know? Sure, cheat weekend, that's... cheat week. <laughs> <laughs> Just cheat month, cheat month. Cheat year. I was in a cheat month in December, so. <laughs> well, I think you and, and a lot of the other, uh, a lot of uh, everybody, near, yeah, most near everybody. everybody. 
Yeah, you know, I actually was on a diet until about the middle of December, and I knew I was going to be home. Uh, I'm from Michigan, and that's where my parents live, and uh, we were there for a week, and I, I, you know, strategically timed the diet to end, you know, a week before, because I knew there was no chance, and, you know, no chance I was going to be following it (laughs) when I was at my parents' house, so... um, Yes, you know, it's a really good question. I'm, I think the cheat day is probably almost never a good idea. Um, a cheat meal here and there, I, I kind of don't like the term cheat because it uh, just kind of tends to have bad implications. Um, as long as you're hitting your goals, right? And let's say you want, you're on, you want to lose 10 pounds and you're on track after a few weeks. And if you want to keep a free meal in here and there, you know, just so you can go out and, you know, have a nice dinner out with your wife or, you know, your family, friends or something, you know, as long as you're staying on track, you know, totally right. People have to make their own trade-offs and decide if it's worth it or not. You know, again, that's kind of a personal choice if they want to, you know, that trade-off's worth it for them. Cause I think just generally, you know, a quote unquote cheat meal can, it's going to always kind of jump your weight up a little bit the next day, which you know, don't weigh in after a, you know, a cheat meal. Uh, I've gotten quite, you know, quite a few, you know, just, just crazy emails. From, Despondent people. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they're just like, Oh, you know, why is my weight up two or three pounds? And I'm like, and they go, Oh, you know, I had pizza last night. Like, okay. Well, you had pizza last night. So pizza probably really salty, probably a lot of extra calories, you know, a lot of carbs. So again, you're, you're bloated up from that. So of course your weight's going to be up. So, you know, that's kind of one of the negatives. And for some folks, that doesn't matter, right? After one day, they're right back on track, their weight's right back down, and they're progressing just like normal. So so for those folks, hey, great. If you want to do it, do it. Um, For some folks, you know, with the slower metabolism, you know, you can spend the entire week trying to fight that weight back off. So you finally get back to where you were. And then guess what? It's the weekend again. You have another cheat. So then that weight goes back up. And then you're fighting it all the next week. And so it happens, right? So now we're back to that consistency principle that we were talking about earlier. And it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're following things strict through the week. And then that one meal is kind of offsetting things and you know, you're not really getting anywhere. And I just think, you know, we, I had some of my colleagues, they wrote, uh, you know, a female dieting book. And there's a whole section in there on, uh, on dieting psychology. And so, you know, what we almost kind of recommend for, for a lot of folks you know, again, everyone's going to make their own trade-offs on, you know, what's kind of worth it to them. But if you can have, let's say, a 10 or 12-week diet and you can get to your goals, 10, 15 pounds weight loss, something like that, and that means you're really strict for those 10 or 12 weeks, right? So you just really go all in. Versus, you know, you have a couple cheats here and there, but all of a sudden to lose those same 10 or, you know, 15 pounds, it takes 16 weeks or a little bit longer. You know, is it worth it to extend it, you know, an additional four to six weeks, something like that? You know, again, that's just kind of a personal choice. But, uh, you know, it kind of seems like there can be at times where you're just battling yourself if you do a lot of cheat meals. So I think if you use moderation and you can stay on track and you can kind of adjust your goals, knowing that, you know, maybe if you do have a really, really big cheat meal each week, you know, you adjust your goals down a little bit, realize you may not lose quite as much as you otherwise would. You know, hey, again, you know, each person is going to make their own choices and trade offs on that. So, yeah, I, th- I think for me, like, I'm not Freddie, right? Obviously, and I mean, Freddie's this like he's 12 years older than me, but he's just uh, at such a higher level of an athlete than I. I don't want to say ever will be, but I am anytime in the near future. And for me, I noticed that if I'm like super strict, uh, or and then I like if, if I'm super strict, but I fail then I go down that rabbit hole of, ah, forget it. You know, it's not worth it. I screwed, totally. up, I screwed up that one meal and now I'm done versus, uh, and, and that there's, you know, there's no point in continuing it. I, I, I ruined it versus a new approach that I've taken, which I'm, I'm a little better at is, is acknowledging that cheats or fails are going to happen sometimes unintentionally, uh, sometimes just by the nature of it's, you know, 11 o'clock, you've been on calls all night long and you're not getting back to your cooler anytime soon. So you got to get something quick versus, uh, yeah, this one was totally intentional and I just really wanted that Mm -hmm. cheeseburger. But being okay with the fact that those things happen and that you just need to kind of dust yourself off and keep moving. Because I I don't know if you found this to be true with your clients, but it seems like a lot of people expect themselves to be perfect and there's no such, there's really no perfect. No, there, there is no such thing as perfect on a diet. Um, I'm very confident that nobody's ever followed a, a, 
you know, a diet perfectly, you know, for, I want to say, uh, for a very long time. How about that? For any length of time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can get through a week, maybe two, maybe three, but then you start (laughs) start talking things inside your head that go on. Okay, so, um, so RP Strength, you've got a lot of different programs. Um, both weight loss and mass gain. You've got some books. Can you talk about the overall programs you guys offer? And um, and, uh, and we'll start with that. Yeah, sure. So I like to think of it in kind of three tiers. So uh, the the lowest level tier is just our ebook. So if you're just looking to gain more knowledge, you just want to know more about dieting and training. So we have three ebooks. One is the main Renaissance Diet just kind of the the basis of you know sports nutrition and that's just our kind of our our core approach to everything in terms of nutrition so again the nutritional priorities you know that's where the chart came from so that's one ebook another ebook is the is more or less our our training ebook so it's all about uh, you know training so again it has the same kind of chart in terms of what are the the biggest components of training you know again that was written by uh, two of my colleagues uh, two PhDs in sport physiology and, and Chad Smith, uh, the owner of Juggernaut Training Systems, who is you know one of the literally strongest powerlifters of all time. I think he has like a top ten total. Um, so that covers all things training related. Um, it's uh, it's probably about twice as long as the RP Diet book, so it's a it's a really thorough read. So if you're really interested in you know the the scientific basis of you know all things training, you know really gets into the nitty gritty of period periodization. You know that's a that's a good start. And again, you know these are all just kind of to build your knowledge base. Um, then the third book that just came out uh, last fall, so just a couple months ago, mm-hmm. was the female dieting book. So that's uh, you know really good for females. And again, if there's females out there listening and you're trying to decide between the RP diet book and the female diet book, it's probably a good idea to start with the female diet book. Again, I think the section on female dieting psychology is just, I mean, something that. That everyone needs to read, but a lot of times, you know, females are battling, you know, all sorts of outside pressures, you know, in terms of dieting and, and body image and all that. So I think it's a really important thing for all females to read. So that's kind of tier one. You know, it's just ebooks, just trying to build your knowledge. And then if you want uh, above that, we have kind of our second tier, which is all templates. So these these are usually around you know hundred dollars, um, and so our diet templates usually last about three or four months. Um. In, in those, so if you want to kind of take the thinking out of it for you, again, you could you could read our ebooks and you could build your own diet and training programs from those. Absolutely, you can. And again, our ebooks are usually like thirty, forty dollars. Um, but if you you kind of want to take the thinking part out of it for you, then that's where the templates come into play. It just takes everything from the books and lays it out for you, so you really don't have to think, right? You just kind of plug things in. So it kind of simplifies that process. And on those templates, are they? Uh do they take into account like different physical sizes of the of the person that that's buying that? Yep, one hundred percent. Right? There's no we don't you know we don't do cookie cutter stuff at RP. You know, it's not going to be some one size fits all. You know, on the training templates that we have, there's literally like five or six different variables, so it's pretty in depth. So again, there's tons of different possibilities there. Um, on the diet templates, it's mostly based around your gender, uh, body weight. And goal if you want to lose weight or if you want to gain weight. So the fat loss is for weight loss, and the muscle gain option is for those looking to gain weight. So those are the three main variables. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that you sent to me, and that's what I, I liked about that was you're right. It, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. You know how many carbs you've got to hit in a meal, how much protein, how much fat. It's easier to plan meals with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you just kind of... It was really easy to plan the meals. I mean, you, when you say template, like take the guesswork out, it doesn't tell you you got to eat this kind of protein in this kind of cut or whatever. But you know, you got to eat. For me, it was I think 40, it was forty two grams of protein. You typically were most of my meals, and especially yeah, for the a ones, guy your size. Yeah. yeah, the ones around uh, workouts, especially. Yeah, for my size, for me, that was because you customize it to me. Um, yeah, it was easy to hit that though. Once I figured out how much forty two grams was of my various of my chicken, of my lean, you know, my. Yep turkey bacon or whatever whatever it was i my eggs once i knew that that was pretty easy to get cooking with it no pun totally. intended yep so <laughs> yeah yeah good one uh literally the entire kind of premise of the templates is right is to 
to simplify the, the dieting process for folks. So you can read for days and days and days on the internet all sorts of different dieting stuff. So, you know, you come to RP, you know, you know it's written by folks that have PhDs, you know, RDs, things like that. So you know, you know, that they've read all the research, they know what they're doing. But, you know, you don't have to you don't have to guess, well, you know, well, how much should I be eating at this time or around training, or, you know, how much protein or fats or carbs? Nope, you don't have to think about that. You just look at the template, it's all laid out. And again, getting back to the idea of how can we create a diet that's going to be consistent, long-term, and sustainable, you know, again, the general idea of the, of the templates, the, the layout won't necessarily change, but the amounts will based on your goal. Mm-hmm. So again, it takes the thinking out of it for you. So, you know, you kind of can cut through all the BS out there, you know, all these gimmicks and fads and quick fixes and detoxes and these little waste squirmer things and all these ridiculous products. You can just go, you know, F that, you know, I just want something that works. And again, I mean, we know they work. You know, if you Everything comes with, you know, directions on how to use, you know, a nice long FAQ and you can get access to our Facebook clients group, which is just really, I mean, I'm kind of always in shock of how much that the Facebook clients group has taken off. You know, we started that in like March or April and we're at like 9,000 members right now. So it's just kind of, yeah, it's it's just crazy, you know, and people are, you know, pretty nice in there, you know, they help answer questions. So again, if you get the templates, you know, it takes the guesswork out of it, kind of simplifies the dieting process. You know, those are the, the templates in a nutshell. Um, that's kind of tier two. You know, above that tier three, we have our one-on-one coaching, so you can work with one of our PhD consultants. Um, you know, again, you really don't have to do any thinking with that. You know, you just send us your schedule, you know, your layout, everything like that. You know, we, we build your diet for you, and we're going to be in, you know, we ask that you keep us updated twice a week with body weight updates, and we'll kind of do all the modifications updates for you. So those are kind of the three tiers. You have, you know, the books, just kind of build your own knowledge. You know, you can do it yourself. Um, above that, the templates where, you know, we build it for you. It takes the guesswork out of it. And then above that, you know, the, the really direct, interactive one-on-one coaching. And we, we're focusing kind of on the weight loss stuff. But you do, have, like you, you did mention, you have um, uh, an equal program for strength gain, too, and mass gain, too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, totally. Yep. Folks are looking to gain weight. Yep, they would just choose the muscle muscle gain option on so, the template. So to go back to, you touched on it at the beginning, but for someone who's just starting out who's going to jump on um, your site, uh, explain the periodization in Renaissance periodization. What What is the idea of periodization in strength training like? What's that mean? Sure. So periodization is, is the idea of you're sort of logically, you know, you have set phases that build upon one one another for specific purposes. So in, I guess in terms of strength periodization, you have kind of three phases. You have hypertrophy, you have strength, and you have peaking. So, you know, more or less one is the off-season. So hypertrophy is like the off-season. That's when you're building your base, you know, growing more muscle, things like that. You take that new muscle, you enter the strength phase. So you take that new muscle that you've you've put on and you get that new muscle stronger so this is probably you know a really good example for powerlifting. so you grow some muscle in the off season you get that new muscle stronger during the strength phase and then from there you take that new strength and then you peak it so peaking is all about that one day that one competition that one specific event that you know competition whatever that you need to be your all-time best at that's the entire idea of peaking so again you have your off season you know then you have your strength phase you go into peaking Okay, so for a uh, again a guy like me who's I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna be peaking for anything <laughs> anytime mm-hmm. soon other than just getting through uh, night shifts and kids and all that. Um, <laughs> Which hey man, this competition itself is <laughs> too small. Yes, it, it is. Sometimes it's a grudge match. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's totally man. It's yeah, like a, yeah. So um, yeah, that too. <laughs> There's a lot of wrestling analogies you could use. Um, and again, you touched on this earlier too, but for someone who's just starting, who's going to maybe check out the website, but doesn't know where to, to really start, you mentioned uh, about a gram of protein a day, sorry, a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Yeah, and then can you walk walk through like the equivalent in, gram, in um, fats and in carbs too for what you think people should probably be looking at in terms of that calorie in, calorie out? Yeah, so uh, let's just use a kind of a mock-up example. Let's say we have a 200-pound you know, male so, you know, roughly you're looking at 200 grams of protein a day. And we're just going to assume that this guy is just going to some CrossFit classes a few times a week. So about an hour of activity, you know, several days a week. So on days that he's training, you know, he's at about 200 grams of carbs. And then, you know, again. Which isn't that much, actually. It's it's easy to hit 200 grams. 
Totally. Because it sounds like a lot when you say a gram per pound, but (laughs) that's only like, what, five slices of bread maybe? Six slices of bread? Uh, You know, it depends. So, you know, about one cup of rice is about 40 grams of carbs, so it's probably a little bit more than that. So you're looking at like, I don't know, if you only use rice, you know, five cups of rice for a day, which... You know, it's, it depends on how you look at it, right? It depends on the food choices you make. You know, if you're if you're using, again, yeah, you know, if you eat a donut, yeah, all of a sudden, you know, you're at like 80 grams of carbs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, you know, if you look at it, you're like, oh, well, I only have 120 grams left, you know, for the day. So, you know, that can be one of the, you know, uh, there's a diet style out there called if it fits your macros, where you can just eat literally whatever food you want, kind of whenever you want. Um, and it's okay. It has it's pretty good, you know, pretty good starting point for a lot of folks. Uh, it doesn't kind of hit some of the minor details, uh, but that's really kind of the only critique of it. So, you know, if you if you are dieting, right, and, uh, you know, you have a, a set amount of carbs and you spend half of that or so, you know, <clears throat> eating, you know, a, a pastry or something, again, I think that's one of the downsides because, you know, another thing, you know, what happens when you usually eat sugary foods? Well, your blood sugar goes all over the place. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, what else? Do you usually find yourself wanting more of it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, sure, right? So, again, it's like if you if you have a set amount of food that you can eat, you know, using food choices like that just isn't usually a good idea because you end up craving more. And like you said, you know, your blood sugar goes crazy. So, again, you're hungry not too long after. Mm-hmm. So it's not very satiating. Right. So it's like, you know, you have a donut and then like 30 minutes later, you're like, oh, man, I want another one because <laughs> you know, you're not very full. So, again, if you're dieting, you know, if you make hopefully – a little bit smarter food choices, you know, can help fill you up, you know, a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. So, and again, you know, you, that's while you're dieting now, obviously no one's going to be perfect like that. So again, when you're just trying to maintain weight and you're okay with, you know, doing that and you want to, you know, add in some snacks here and there, so, you know, that, right. that's a little bit different story, but you know, it can be one of the, the downsides of dieting and, and using sort of lower quality food choices. And then what about fat in terms of, you know, in, in comparison to body weight uh, in, on a day, day to day basis? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's a good question. So, for using our two hundred pound male as an example, uh, you know, maybe like 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, roughly. Because mm-hmm. it just it, it's going to depend on a number of factors. Just you know, their kind of body composition and things like that. So that last one's kind of really hard to give an exact number. Mm-hmm. But again, it goes back to if you have a decent idea of what your calories are and you already know how much protein and carbs you need, more or less, the number that's left that makes up the difference is just going to be your fats. Yeah. So I get this question a lot from, um, or I hear this con- in conversation with listeners of the show, and this is exactly where I'm at right now, is uh, I spent the last year on a personalized uh, training program where I had a coach who gave me my specific workouts for each week. And the strength components were phenomenal for me, and I'm stronger than I've ever been, which is great because I'm coming out of like back problems and everything like that, uh, all these things that especially cops know. And having my best year in terms of strength I've ever had. I mean, I've had, I've, I've added, awesome. uh, yeah, this year added over 50 pounds to my front squat, over nice. 70 squat pounds to my back squat. Uh, clean and jerk went up 50 pounds in the last six months. Oh, all right. So I'm, I'm building a lot of strength, right? And I don't want to lose that, but I want to get rid of the extra useless weight that I have. So I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared, maybe a little strong, but nervous or worried that. I'm going to lose that strength when I start leaning out. And you, you said earlier that, that you don't think that's the case. So how, okay. how, how do I keep it? <laughs> yeah, sure. So again, you know, it's having most of your carbs around training. Like we talked about, again, that's going to give you more energy in the gym. It's going to help you recover better. So things like that. Not only that, but probably more importantly, is you set your weight loss goals to be about one to two pounds per week. And again, this is going to depend a little bit on your, you know, your starting weight. So for someone like you who's 250, you're probably on the higher end of that. So it's like two pounds a week or so. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a 130 pound female, well, she's probably on the very low end of that. You know, maybe it's 0.5 to one pound per week. But you know, again, it goes back to everyone wants quick results, quick fixes, things like that. So people want to lose that weight really, really fast. Well, realize that there are trade offs that come with everything that you do, right? So if you lose all that weight super, super fast chances are the trade-off is going to be your strengths going to suffer if you do it slow and consistently and gain you know lose one to two pounds a week you know you're going to notice that you're consistently losing fat the scale's going down and again it's not so much of a drop that you're going to find that your strength is cut and again when you're getting into a diet 
we talked about carbs and protein are a little bit more important for uh, you know strength, performance, recovery, and things like that. So what do you do? How do you decrease calories? Because we know you have to lower calories if you want to lose weight. So p- carbs and proteins are going to be left alone when we're starting out. And we need to cut something. Well, what's left to cut? Fat. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everyone always thinks, oh, it's time to diet. It's time to cut carbs. Well, not so fast. Why is that, right? So if you think about it a little bit more closely and go, well, carbs matter more for performance. So if I can keep my carbs in longer on the diet, I'm going to keep my strength up. I'm going to perform better. Let's cut the fats first because fats don't have a whole lot to do with it. All of a sudden you do that, you know, you can find that, you know, you're hitting PRs along the way, you know, while losing weight. Nice. I'm going to have to give that, uh, make that my uh, paradigm through which I, I do all this and focus all this. So what, sure. are, what are some of the other... Uh, athletes that you work with that people know um, especially in that CrossFit community there's quite a few I and mean, it's a lot it's a pretty uh, prestigious list of people yeah yeah you know we've you know we've done pretty well and got some pretty good results and you know it's all kind of you know referrals right so you help somebody do really well and they're just really excited about it and they tell their friends and stuff but uh, yeah you know we have Freddie China um, you know quite a few people in California you know we have Colleen Foch who's I think was like top 12 or so last year at the California Regional, top 15, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamie Hagia, who again, she's down in SoCal area. She's a juggernaut athlete. You know, she's again, she's, you know, top 10, 15 uh, CrossFit athlete in uh, in California. Um, so there's some big ones in California. We got the, the chance to work with the entire Boston Grid League team. So they have some pretty high level athletes. Someone like Lindy Barber, who made the game sure. as an individual athlete. Um, we were able to work with a handful of masters CrossFit athletes. Um, a couple of them placed, you know, top five, top ten in their, you know, age categories. Uh, we worked with um, the Twelve Labors CrossFit team. I think they took six last year as a team. They're from uh, Maryland, mm-hmm. so we got to work with all six of them. Um, we worked with a lot of weightlifting folks too. Uh, we worked with Travis Cooper of Muscle Driver, who's a seventy-seven kilo national champion. Um, you know, probably the biggest weightlifting name is Maddie Rogers. Sure. Yeah, you know, she's she's probably the most popular uh, U.S. weightlifter there is. You know, she's got like, I don't know, crazy number of followers on Instagram and all that. So, you know, she was the 69 kilo national champion. So we had two national champions at uh, USAW Nationals last year. Um, this year's going to be pretty big. You know, we have right now we have three of the six female lifters who competed at Worlds. Uh, which is pretty cool. So, you know, 2016 is a really important year for weightlifting with uh, the Olympics coming up. So, you know, we're, we're hoping that uh, that one of them can make the Olympics. That'd be pretty sweet. That'd be awesome, yeah. Well, Maddie seems like she's uh, her career has just taken off. Totally, yeah. So she's, where do – sorry, go ahead. I was going to say she's only 20 years old. I know. That's, <laughs> that's She's got a lot ahead of her. So where can people find uh, more about your programs? What's your website? Any social media that uh, you got out there? The Instagrams and Twitters? Yeah, sure, man. Uh, you know, uh, I love Instagram. I think it's really good, especially for what we do. It's really good, just kind of visual. Um, it's at it's, uh, RP Strength. RP Strength. Yeah, you guys, I, I follow, I've been following you guys for a while, and you post those videos like the, not even the before and after, but sometimes just the like matter of weeks difference. Uh, from a lot of your clients and it's pretty cool yeah totally man again you know, it's just one of the great things about instagram you know we have a lot of clients and you know a lot of folks using the templates or one-on-one coaching and you know they, they love to share their results and you know we love to i, I said recently in rp clients group you know like i personally get as excited about you know seeing people's before and afters of clients that that they probably do themselves like i'm yeah. I'm, I'm as pumped up as they are <laughs> nice. so and the website what's the website yeah, sure. So it's at RP Strength, uh, you know, for Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook is just Renaissance Periodization, and the website is, uh, you know, RenaissancePeriodization dot com. So it's a little bit longer name, but uh, you know, luckily with Google, if you just start typing in the first <laughs> few letters, it kind of it'll pop up, and I'll include uh, the links to all of that in our show notes so that people can find it. Okay, cool. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Thank you. And uh, you've also been kind enough to offer uh, one of the templates, either the weight loss template or the uh, mass gain template to a listener of the show today. Totally. Uh, And that's awesome. And I will give details in that in the post show here when we wrap up and how to... uh, how to apply to win that program. That's awesome. That's a, a great value from you. We did one already. 
uh, when uh, on on Freddie's episode we gave one away, and that's uh, up and rolling. And I think we'll hear back from him uh, in a little bit after he's uh, he's gotten into the program a little bit more. So that's awesome, and uh, this is a good chance to give another one away. And like I said, I learned a lot about that. That timing to me was well, that was the biggest takeaway I got was being able or being cognizant of my timing of my carbs around the workout and being okay with it. I noticed a huge um, recovery, quicker quicker recovery, less crash, and a, a lot less soreness. So uh, definitely think you guys are doing awesome things. Definitely encourage people to check out your Instagram for all those amazing transformation videos and then just all these crazy ripped athletes you guys have working with you. It's awesome stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for being on the show, man. I, I That's a lot of good takeaways. I really like this point that, you know, Maybe I'm focusing on the minutia when I need to look big picture a little bit more. And that's something I preach to my, my squad oftentimes about tactics and, um, and organization issues. But sometimes I, I lose sight of that on, in my own diet. So that was a good, uh, a good reminder. Sure. Thanks for that. Um, we'd love to have you back on some other time too. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get, we'll dive into the weeds even deeper on some of this other stuff. Yeah. Cool, man. You know, uh, I guess the ending point here is, you know, what you said to you, a lot of listeners asking about, you know, hopefully no longer you know do you have to be afraid of losing strength you know while dieting because there is a way that you can structure things and and do it uh, kind of focus on the bigger picture long term you know you don't have to rush results you know kind of think of the bigger picture longer term and you know don't rush things be slow steady consistency you know above all else and you know there's no reason that you can't lose you know five ten fifteen pounds and, and not you know hit prs while training so I definitely encourage everyone to check out renaissanceperiodization.com for more information on that. And uh, you'll see some of the cool products they have out there that are uh, really, really helping a lot of people. Nick, thanks for being on the show, man. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It's an honor. All right, everybody. So to follow Nick on Instagram, it's RP Strength at rp strength his website is renaissanceperiodization.com i'm not even going to try and spell that out uh on air and put myself on the spot but uh, you can go to the show notes at the squadroom.net and look for episode 28 it should be at the top of the show if you're listening to this as it's fresh and uh there'll be show notes there with everything and all the links that you need now to enter this giveaway for the free weight loss or mass gain nutrition plan from nick and from renaissance periodization it's quite simple. You just need to text RP giveaway, all one word, to 44222. You'll be entered into the giveaway by entering your email address at the prompt, and you'll be signed up for our mailing list. Standard text messaging rates apply on that intro uh, or on that uh, application for the contest, but they, we won't be texting you anything after that other than a confirmation that you've entered. That's it. That has to do with your, uh, your phone. Uh, everything is by email after that. So don't worry about us. We're not tracking your phone number or anything like that. I can't even see it, actually. To follow The Squad Room, it's the, at The Squad Room on both Instagram and Twitter. Like I said, the website is thesquadroom.net. Head over there for the show notes and links to all the stuff we talked about in the show. If you have a moment, please consider leaving a review on iTunes. Uh, I want to say, too, you might have noticed, maybe you didn't, we are a little late on the... On an episode, we went three weeks between episodes instead of our usual two. <clears throat> nice to be back in the saddle after a surprise uh, stomach flu, which was kind enough to take down every member of the house and slowed us down quite a bit. And then, of course, spring break uh, came in there, too, and interrupted all of uh, my grandiose plans for pumping out a lot of episodes in March. Oh, well. Well, between those two things and some uh, some uh, priority high-risk stuff, not high-risk, but uh, high-profile high stuff at work... Uh, Things got the better of me. All right. Anyway, uh, again, I want to thank SB Tactical and the iCombat Training System for their support of the show. Check out their individual officer, iCombat Pro, at sbtactical.com. Pre-sales, uh, order, pre-sale orders are being taken. Until next time, take care of each other, and please stay safe.